like too cool for school type of thing, but uh, yeah. definitely cool. Thanks. I'm here with a very special guest. Um, his name is Shabazz. Do you go by anything else? Um, depends on who's talking to me. What do you? What would you like me to introduce you as? Shabazz. Shabazz. I mean, social media knows Shabazz the OG, but Shabazz the OG. But my name is Shabazz. Okay, that's dope. I've been following you for a while. I How long? Like a few years, I think. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it was crazy because like before I came, I came out here. I just happened to like see one of your videos, and I was like, "Oh shit, he's in Miami. I should hit him up." Yeah, I live here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I we're matching. Ironically, we're like legitimately matching. So that's the it. power of uh, I mean, the color of uh, success. Is that orange? Yeah, orange is like, it's like a a color, one of the colors of success. Really, I didn't know that. I didn't know until somebody told me. I thought it was green or like red. No, it's um, well, it may be others, but I know orange is one. Okay, orange is a very good color, and it's one of my favorite colors. Yeah, I love orange. Are you from New York? Philly. You're from Philly? Yeah. No way. West to be exact. Big West Side. What's up? You don't give me Philly vibes. What I give you, Brooklyn? Yeah, you give me. I'm from Brooklyn. You give me New York vibes. That's because I'm, like. Brooklyn by default. Like, my friends from Brooklyn, when I say I'm from Philly, if I'm with them, they say, no, you're not. He's from Brooklyn. Are you from, we lived in Brooklyn? No, but I've been running with Brooklyn guys since 89. Okay. Like I have a lot of friends in Brooklyn, like, really, really close friends. I'm from Brooklyn. Where? Sheepshead Bay, like, Bensonhurst, Flatbush. Oh, okay. Like, over there. Yeah, my friends from Best uh Brownsville. Yeah, it's like the other side. East New York. Yeah. So t I need, all right. So, like, what exactly, like, where did you come, like, how did you get into this, like, <laughs> where did you come from? <laughs> social media space. I, I, I like this interview because I could tell you didn't write down no questions. None. You're just shooting from the head. I never write down questions. I'm just a conversationalist. Yeah, I do the same thing when I go do speaking engagements. I never have notes. Really? Yeah, I speak in front of hundreds of people, thousands of people. You do? And no notes. What do you talk about? It depends on what the audience is. Really? Every conversation is different. Yeah, because if you have a script, you may go talk to somebody and the Not script connect. don't fit the audience. Right. Now you're boring. Right. Now you they don't they don't resonate. Right. So being a conversationalist like yourself, when I go to speak, uh huh. Whether it's a school, a prison, a university, business people, lawyers, whoever I'm speaking to, I speak to that room. I just ask before I speak, whoever the administrator is or the, the facilitator, I just ask them, you know, who's in this room and what does this room need? And then when they tell me, then I got it from there. Okay, so how did you start speaking and what do you speak about? Um, is it jail? Jail? Like jail stuff? Or like Depends. Sometimes Because you yeah. said you speak at prisons. Yeah, I I I, I, I speak in, I speak to uh I go to jails and speak to prisoners because I've been to prison. Right. Um I go I've spoken at elementary schools as low as the second grade. Okay. Uh I've spoken at universities. What do you speak about? What's um, your message? My ultimate overall message, no matter who I'm speaking to. Mm -hmm. my, my greatest um, thing to speak about or talk about is accountability and being in touch with your person and who you are. Because a lot of people live life based on other people's realities. And a lot of people are searching for success and don't know how to find it because they're looking everywhere else besides within. So they look at what somebody else did to become successful and they think that they can do it because someone else did it. And sometimes they overlook their own talents. So my biggest thing is whether it's productive, non-productive, like life starts and stops with being accountable for yourself. So that's, that's the, if I had to round off all the speaking engagements into one targeted message, it would be 
the power of accountability. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that to a sense. I feel like everyone should have their own puzzle in a way. You know, like just because something worked for you doesn't mean it's going to work for me. So, like, you got to figure it out on your own. Right. But a lot of people don't do that. Right. So how did you get involved with, like, the money team and, like, Floyd? Like, where does that – how does that – where did that come from? Out of that factor in. Yeah. Um, from social media, actually. Like, um, Floyd saw me on social media. He saw what I was doing, and like yourself and many others, liked what he saw, liked the messages, liked the page. You know, just kind of gravitated towards, like, who is this guy? Yeah. You know? A lot of big people follow you. I've seen that. But, and, and Well, I'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But with – um. You know, with Champ, it was like, you know, we ultimately, um, you know, he arranged for, for us to meet. You know, I went to his 40th birthday back in L.A. in uh, 2017. That's when we first met. And he just celebrated his 47th birthday here last weekend. So it's like our seventh year anniversary. <laughs> wow. So, so we've been friends since we met. But it started from social media. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we... we met because he uh he liked what I was doing. On Were you always media. reviewing videos or is that like a Well, I've been doing videos um since 2015. Okay. But they started to get really popular in 2016 after um Meek reposted one of my videos. Mm. You know, Meek and I are friends, so Meek reposted one, then he reposted a couple more and then a lot of other people started posting. And then to your question about some really big people following me, like I've been around the music industry, you know, um, professionally and casually since I was 18. So I know a lot of people. How? What were you doing there? Well, I started an internship when I was 18. Okay. And from interning at a radio station, went into radio promotions, went into uh, road management, to product, I mean, um, artist development, uh, project management. So I, I've been around the music industry for quite a for, for for quite a long time, and so I know a lot of people. The thing about it is, a lot of people who I knew in the music industry only knew me from being in those circles, but didn't really know me as an individual. They just saw you, right? And then when they saw me on social media, a lot of people started to realize, oh, shit, he got some sense. Mm. So it started to resonate with a lot of different people. So I, a lot of people I know, but a lot of them are really my friends. And, yeah, that's what a, that's what a quote-unquote big name support comes from. Okay. And you're Muslim? I am. So it's interesting. I was talking about that Um with someone I was saying, like, I have friends that are, like, I'm I'm Middle Eastern, so it's, like, the Arab Muslims and, like, the other Muslims, it's, like, it's a different culture. Right. Different cultures. So same religion. Yeah. Same beliefs. Yes, but it's, it's, it's like, uh, it's different. What, what made you want to be a Muslim? Like, I'm sure you're not born Muslim. No, I wasn't born, but I wasn't born Muslim. However, um... When I was 21, 22, um, my girlfriend at that time, I was hanging out with her brothers and her cousins, you know, like every day that was my, those was my old heads, as we say in Philly. And they were Muslim, and that's who introduced me to the religion. And A girl? No, not her, 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 her brother and her cousins. Oh, her brother. Her brothers and her cousins, yeah. They introduced me to the, uh, they introduced me to Islam. Started taking me to Juma prayer on Fridays, and you know, then I started, you know, then I took Shahada, then I started fasting during Ramadan, and you know. Do you still day. fast? Absolutely, I pray. I pray every day as well. I pray five times a day. You pray five times a day? Yes. I almost was going to be late because my last prayer came in today at seven twenty-seven, but I can All pray right. it when I get home. Really? Yeah, yeah I, I make my prayers for sure. Yeah, it's a serious religion. It's discipline. It's discipline. It's discipline. Um, Have you ever fell off since you started? Um, fell off in what sense? Like didn't pray? No. You know, I think my roughest years were the beginning, you know, and understanding that this is something serious, you know. 
But then as life went on for me, I started to connect more and more to the religion because I could associate my life and the things that were happening in my life to the religion, my blessings, how my life moved, how things worked for me, you know, and once I really, you know, got to a space where I was more and more disciplined, more and more consistent, it just became like easy. Like it's really just routine. Yeah. Islam is really a way of life. It's not just, you know, you can't put it on and take it off like a jacket, like either you, either you about it or you're not. And again, and it's not easy. You know, we all have our pluses and minuses, you know, where I may be strong. Someone else may be weak where someone else is strong. I may be weak, you know, so you're the, the do practice. You f- do you feel like, sorry to cut you off, but no, it's fine. does it affect your like personal life? It doesn't affect it because um, the only person that could really derail or make me sin or do things that I'm not supposed to do is me. No, not sin, but let's say you date a girl and she's Christian and you're a Muslim. How's that going to work? Well, first and foremost, Muslims are not supposed to date. We do, but we're not supposed to. There's no girlfriends and boyfriends in Islam. It's only husbands and wives. That's the first thing. But in the event that Muslim man is involved with a Christian woman, you know, by the principles of the religion, a Muslim man can marry a Christian woman. Yeah, I know that. And a Jew. You know, so exactly. So it doesn't really conflict. But let's just say she's just no denomination. It really just comes down to being respected on both sides. Because I had an instance, right, mm-hmm. where I, I was around, I was uh, talking to someone who was Muslim, and I'm Jewish. Okay. And I personally, like, I'm Israeli Jewish. Okay. So, like, deep-rooted, like. mm mm-hmm. um, And, like, I, I, I uh, every time I would talk to him and he would talk about the religion, like, I would think of my grandmother, like, how she would be like, oh, my God, you know what I mean, like. It was like, it was really like, made me uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, some people can make it comfortable or uncomfortable. And for me, my position has always been, when you hear, like, if you read the Quran, it'll tell you, like, there's no compulsion in Islam. And we're not supposed to argue with people. We're not supposed to argue about you, with you about what you believe and what you don't believe. Like, it's No, just, I don't mean arguing. I mean, like, it w- wouldn't it affect like if the person is another religion it, we it, i don't think it would work like they would have to be muslim too well cuz it t- it takes over your life you just said you pray 5 times a day so your life is your religion kind right. of right i mean it's easier if you both practice the same religion right i think it's imperative it's it's easier what's imperative is the moral compass what's imperative because if a muslim man can marry a Jewish woman or, or marry a Christian woman. The Christian women, I'm not too I'm not too versed in the Jewish component, but the Christian women, you know, are referred to as women of the book, which means these are the these are women who believe that Allah is God. They believe that, you know, the prophet Esau was a prophet and not the son of son of God. So they have that belief. So the belief is there. Everything in Islam and Christian, you know, Christianity preceded Islam. So the books, the disciples, the, the prophets, like all of these people are still the same. So when it comes to the, the, the continuity of the man being with, a, let's say, a Christian woman who's not Muslim, but she believes that Allah is God and Jesus is a prophet, you know, the rest is, the rest is easy. You know, it comes. It, what comes into play then is is mutual respect amongst one another. It typically, typically, like if if and then let's go with the Jewish component. If she's worshiping and he's worshiping, and you know they may if they worship different ways, it's still going to come back to how do we treat one another? It's not going to work. I don't think it's going to work. I mean, you know, and it depends. I mean, I just, I just feel like. Um, if you're like super religious, uh, then you to to be able to respect it, you kind of have to. It's like one side has to take in the others, 
religion too. Well, see, here's where I think a lot of people go wrong. A lot of people go wrong because they confuse the actual religion and practicing the lifestyle. That's where the real that's where the real camaraderie comes in. This is how a Muslim, a Baptist, a Jew, a Jehovah's Witness, and a Buddhist can all congregate and get along with one another because at the end of the day, you have your different religious beliefs about where the religion derived from and, and how this came and how that came. But at the end of the day, who are you as an individual? Who are you as a person and how do you treat people? That's the most important component of it all. Yeah. So even in a relationship, it's still going to come back to that. Because when, you get, when you're talking about the religion itself, not the way of life, but when you're talking about the religion, you're talking about, no, Abraham didn't do this. See, Abraham was born at this day. And you, 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 you're debating and battling the facts. Well, the I'm just saying, like, you're fasting religion. for Ramadan, right, for 40 days. So if you had a woman and she wasn't, right, right. and she'd be eating, like. Say that again. She'd be eating okay. during the 40 days. 30. 30, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, and and so I would assume, like, okay, I don't want to be around you while I'm eating. Why? But if you live together, that would be kind of difficult. Not at all. I mean, I think it's disrespectful to it's eat in not. front of somebody who's, who's, who's fasting. It's it, not. it is. If you, but, but if you know, if, if I meet you and I like you and you're not Muslim, and, and you, again, if you just go in that direction of having – someone that you're personable with in that to that degree and you're Muslim, you both already know what comes with that. So I'm not going to feel like she's disrespecting me when Ramadan comes. I already know she's not Muslim. She already knows she's not Muslim, so she wouldn't expect me to be upset with her because she's still eating. Now, what I have seen and what I have experienced is, again, the treatment. This is my man or this is my lady. They're fasting. I'm not. I won't eat in front of them mm-hmm. out of respect for them. Right. Sometimes people will say, no, I'm, I'm going to fast, fast with, with you. you. Right. You know, again, it comes back to the person. It's going to always come back to You're that. Right. It's going to always right. come back to how you treat each other. That's true. I agree with you. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. So you said you have a podcast. I do. What do you talk about? Ooh, uh, depends on who I'm interviewing. So the name of the podcast is named after my book, um, Flip Your Life. Flip Your Life. Flip Your Life, yes. And w- what I like to do is everyone has an inception period to whatever point they are in their life or whatever their career path may be. And at some point you decided, okay, it's time to transition. It's time to flip. It's time to do something new. So I like to talk to people about those transition points and periods in life. When you started here, at what point did you feel like it was time to flip into whatever you're doing now? And what do you perceive your next flip to be? So it's just basically talking to people about their journeys. Okay. And then just having a regular regular dialogue as well. How do you pick your guests? Oh, you're vaping. I got something for you. You do? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, how do you pick your guests? Um, so I try to have people who I believe the audiences will be interested you know, in. Interested in, and then I try to talk to people who I believe are interesting and have interesting stories. So, you know, um, my first guest. I have ten episodes now. My first guest was um, super producer Rico Love. Um, I've done people from Love and Hip Hop, and fast forward, my last guest was a young lady, 28 years old, and she's into financial literacy and heavy in the world of trading. So she's in the financial world. So people that I talk to, I want to, I want whoever to watch, whoever watches the episodes, I want them to be able to leave entertained and educated at the same time. Yeah. So you'll learn something about that person, and then you may, you'll may you learn something additional about, you know, just life in general. That's good. So I try to make it entertaining, but educational at the same time. It's hard to do. 
Not for me. No? No, because what I've learned is people approach you based on how you carry yourself. I like to have fun, mm -hmm. but I'm not nothing to play with. Right. I know how to joke, but I'm also educated. Right. So it's like I don't really get the dumb shit components approaching me. So it's it's not hard to entertain and educate because people expect both from me. So that's a prerequisite that I don't have to lay out before I interview people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for, for me, like, I want to educate people, but I, I don't. I don't. You don't have the patience. Huh? You don't have the patience to educate people. Yeah, I don't. I don't. No, no, I've, 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 just like you watched me, I haven't watched you for years, but I watched I've you. I've only been doing this for seven months. So, so when I, I was supposed to come to L.A. before. Yes, you were. And I was going to come on your show there. Yes. But that didn't work out. Right. So now you're here. So once Rhea said that you reached back out. Yeah. Um. I started to look at your post, mm -hmm. and and I'm looking, and I'm like, yo, she's something else. Yeah. But I but I read I read characters very well and very fast. Like what? It just depends on the people, but like with you, I I immediately picked up on she's slick, right? She quick with it, right? She got a sharp tongue, yeah. and she got small. Amount of patience. Small amount of patience. Next to zero. Next to zero. You're very on on the money. Yeah. So I I picked up on that through looking at a few of your videos. Yeah. I my my like I wanted. And you to intimidate people. I do. I believe so. I try not to, but I do. But I can it's because I'm dominant. You know what I mean? And also. I can tell. Um. Yeah. You know, I try not to though. Like I don't want to be can't a bully. Help it. Yeah. But um, I, I wanted to teach, but I just at this point, I'm just like, I just wanted to be entertaining. I want to talk to people who are interesting and just have something to, you know what I mean? I don't want to just talk to anybody like they what have to what, what, what type of entertainment? What, what's entertaining to you? What would be an entertaining interview to you? Well, not what I've been seeing on the Internet. Like I have this whole um, high value man like the same conversation that people have over and over is just boring to me like i need i'm i'm a casting director and i'm also the star at the same time so right. i put people in a room who can bring magic into the room does that make sense so Absolutely. i don't know what so do you, you do know you're educating in what way information Right. Educating I, doesn't have to be standard. So maybe in front of the, the guest maybe the guests are are, listen to this. <laughs> are educating. Say that again. Maybe the guests that I bring can educate more oh, than well, I can. You 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 it depends. Education comes in many forms. Like I said, it doesn't have education can be informal or unintentional. Even okay. when you think you're not teaching, you could be. Right. You could be teaching somebody how to do dumb shit, or you could be teaching somebody how to be productive and progressive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it just really depends on what type of setting you're in and what you're talking about. Right. Education can come out of almost practically anything. Education can come out of a disagreement. That's true. A lot of the stuff he's... If you're receptive. If you're receptive. Yes. That's true. comes with age, maybe, or wisdom to it be does. receptive. You know? Yes. So like Getting out your young, own way. The young, I feel like the young generation needs a lot of guidance, you know? Well, that's why my platform moves the way it does, because yeah. my demographic, my targeted demographic is between the ages of uh, 18 and 64. Oh, wow. So I, I, I get a lot of young people on my, on my, um, on my platform, and, and I resonate with them. It's not on no forcing, it's not on no... Big I, you know, little you, you know, I'm old, you're young, shut up, listen to me. Like, I don't operate like that. You know, I was taught by my mother that as long as you live, you'll learn. And what I added to that is you never know who your teacher will be. So I've learned things from people half my age, mm -hmm. you know, and I've taught people things much older than me. So it's like, 
Yeah, Again, you're like the voice of reason, right? Like, I feel that's like. That's exactly what I am. Yeah. The VOR. That's exactly what I am. What but I'm like that in real life, not just social media. I'm like that with my friends. So what do you do? Like, what's you do social media, but what else do you do? Um, I mean, I gave you my book, so, you know, I'm an author. I had a yeah. podcast. Um, We're in the middle of forming the, um, the TMT Digital Network, which is an actual network and platform that's co- that'll be content based mm. where people can actually deliver content just like any other subscription based platform Hulu, Netflix, so on and so like forth. Like Zeus? Yeah, like Zeus. Um so that's what we're in the process. So you of. work with them? With who? With the money team, with, with Floyd Mayweather? Like well, you work with whatever they're doing? Well, what happened is the T M T Digital Network is something that I started with my business partner Maria Dominguez and my man P. Rilla, who is the vice president of Mayweather Promotions, you know, we just attached it to hip. But the uh, TMT Digital Network is something that I that it was that you're the, starting that I started. But it was with. So what happened is when I, when Floyd and I met, he gave me the green light to utilize the TMT brand. Mm. So if I want to put the what if I, whatever I want to do and associate the brand with. He gave me his blessing to do that. That's awesome. Super awesome. It's like the key. It's like a key. Right. So. I love that. You know, that was him telling me. Or actually, he trusts you. But those was his words. That's what I was about to say. He said to me, you know, I trust you. I believe in what you're doing. You know, what you're doing is important for, you know, our people and our culture. And you know what he's saying? And I support you. So he had, you know, his assistant at the time send me, you know, the logo file. So I just decided. That I wanted to do something with the logo that wasn't, you know, something normal or something, you know, everyday run of the mill. I the first thing I did in 2017, I when I went on a um speaking tour, you know, I um I named it the tour was called Is It Worth My Life? But I said Floyd Money Mayweather and the Money Team presents, you know, Shabazz the OG Is It Worth My Life tour. And then after that is when I came up with the idea, like, wow, maybe I should do something even more, you know, defined. So I thought of the TMT Digital Network, and now it's in the process of coming into fruition. That's actually where my podcast is. It's on Mm tmtdigitalnetwork.com. So, like, right now it lives on the .com while the actual platform and firewalls and all this other technical stuff that Maria is doing that. I don't have nothing to do Does with Does he it. fund your ideas? No. Oh, okay. No, he doesn't. What he does do is when he decides he wants to bless you, he will. Yeah. That's one person you don't have to ask for money. Okay. You do not have to ask for it. He's very, he's very generous. He's very attentive. He's very aware of the people around him. His, 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 ne- his circle is big and small at the same time because he does have a lot of people around him but he pays attention to everyone. He he knows everyone's vision that's around him. He see who's working. He see who's ambitious. He see who's trying their best to, you know, get from point A to point B. And, you know, some ta- sometimes you will get those phone calls okay. about, I got something for you. All right. Well, that's that's dope. No, he's super dope. He's a dope guy. I, I, I heard friend. that he um, funded Hollywood Unlocked. Um, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember when actually when I first met him it was it was 2017. So around that time, I think that's when Jason was just starting um, Hollywood Unlock. I don't know the internal details, but yeah. I do know he had some form of affiliation with it. But I don't know to what extent. Yeah. Well, it's a good friend to have. It's good for you. It's good for the brand. Yeah. I mean, he's just a good dude. You know, he just he's 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 a good guy to know. You know, outside of the whole the money thing and all of that, it's like he's just a cool person, he's a solid person. Yeah, super, super solid. You know, you know every you know different people have different things to say, but you know that just comes with life. But ultimately and overall, you know, you're dealing with two entities with him. You're dealing with Floyd Money Mayweather. You're dealing with Money Mayweather, and then you're dealing with Floyd Mayweather. A lot of people don't like Money May. Mm-hmm. They don't know Floyd. So 
had to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, of course. Especially when there's like, when you have a life of abundance, like it changes you a little bit. Not, you know, like it just, there's a lot of people trying to get fed around you, you know, so you got to kind of move a certain way. Yeah. You know, I so mean, people will feel how they feel, but I'm sure he seems like a great dude. Shout out to Floyd Mayweather and the money team. And shout out to you for coming here. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No, I was, you know, it's it's dope when people want to have you on their platform. Yeah. I like it. I I like when people, you know, give me accolades for what it is that I do to the point of being interested enough to say, hey, I want you to come sit across from me and let's have a conversation. I mean, you you could have, you know, you can interview anybody. Right. Yeah. You know? That's true. Well, I, you know what I like about you? I think, um, well, probably what everybody likes about you. You just, you just seem like real and honest, like, you know, and like, you know, a lot of about life. You know what I mean? Like if someone yeah. comes and asks you for advice, I feel like you're the one like to ask. Cause it would be, re it would be like meaningful and like thought out. Like you wouldn't just like brush somebody off. Like I feel like if you had a, a friend and they would call you, like you would give them advice that if they took it, it's probably the right advice to take. Cause like if I ask people for advice, I don't take 99% of people's advice cause their advice sucks. But I feel like you're the type of person that if I asked you for advice, even though I don't know you, I would have to maybe stop and be like, maybe he's right. You know what I mean? Well, that's because when I give advice, I don't give it frivolously and just based on what I believe. I actually listen to what people are telling me. I actually tap into who they are as an individual, and I really try to help them assess from within, Yeah. you know, what the conclusion sh should be to the advice that they're asking me for. And, and I am honest, and... And I and, and, and I do like to think that I give good advice because I have been through a lot. Yeah, I feel like you help a lot of people. Like I feel like like I like I said, I don't know you, but I just could tell that you help a lot of people with that's your the, with your words. That's the only reason my life is fulfilled. Yeah. Like I don't have uh you know, a, a, a six figure uh salary job, you know. I don't have you know, I'm not I'm not a millionaire. I'm not rich, contrary to what a lot of people think. But I do believe that at 55 years of age, I've tapped into what my purpose is for our society and my contribution to the world. And social media has been the vehicle for me to display that for the world to see and for complete strangers from all walks of life that, I respond to every single day in the DM. Yeah, people probably message you a lot, right? Yeah, every day. But this is why I I had to L, I had to I had to I had to realize how my life worked. You know, a lot of people are trying to figure out life mm -hmm. and how to get where they want to go and, and and what is it going to take to get there. But once I tapped into this whole social circuit and the social media platforms. And I'm, and I'm talking to strangers. I'm talking to people in South Africa, people in Nigeria, people in England, people all across America that's doing exactly what you just said. You know what? I don't know this guy, but I'm going to ask him. Yeah. And, 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 and I've said this on plenty of other interviews. I could show you testimonies and messages from people that will make you cry from the things that they've said that changed their life or enhanced their lives or made them feel differently about themselves based on conversations with me. And I just think it's super dope because it helps me because what it does for me is it, it keeps me from having anxiety about yourself. Right. Now I have another question for you. So let's say you meet someone, right? You help them. They need your help and you help them. And you succeed, and then they go off. You know what I mean? Like, you help them make it or whatever, right? Like, you're, and then they just live their life, and they're gone now. You, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, 
So you're saying, how does that make me feel? Yeah. It doesn't, my job is done. It, Are you, does it, it hurt? No. I'll okay. tell you a real story. Okay. I'll tell you a true story about exactly what you just said. Yeah. And I won't say any names, um, but there's a person who, once upon a time, we were very cordial, very, we had, ran in the same circles, and this person was um, dating someone. Mm-hmm. And I knew the person that they were dating. You know, and me and, this, me and this person, we never had any type of, it was always what's had and was, you know, the hug or whatever when we see each other. And one particular, one particular time I saw this person and I, and I, and I, and I, and I reached out to, um, we were in a club and I reached out to hug this person and she's like, oh, chill, I'm a man. And I'm like, and it was just awkward because I wasn't used to that. And me and the guy, we cool, you know, mm-hmm. like. After I hug you, I'm going to go talk to him. You know what I'm saying? So it caught me off guard, but at the same time, I felt like, you know, she was trying to stun on me a little bit, right? The, yeah. So I kind of like, it rubbed me the wrong way. Didn't, you know, didn't Maybe do Maybe he it. told her to do that. No, not, not, not even. He didn't even. He didn't even see any of this. This was just. No, I'm saying in private. A lot of times guys don't like when their women hug other women. What, what I mean, I'm, other men. I understand that, and that could very well be. Yeah. But at the same time, at the same time, this individual, this this guy, like I said, him and I have an honest rapport. Mm-hmm. But again, let's just go with what you just said is, as the case. Yeah. I just didn't like how it was done. It yeah. felt weird and awkward. And you helped this person? No, not at this point. Oh, Okay. I didn't see or speak to this person for a while after that. Maybe a year or two later, Mm -hmm. I got a phone call of someone asking me that they they needed someone to do acting and things like this. And I knew this person did it. And I knew this person is dope at it. And that was the first person I said to this person. That's the first name I gave him was the person that I wasn't even speaking to. Mm. The person that made me feel disrespected. Yeah. And I connected those two people. And that person went on to do some great things. Mm. That's different than what I'm saying, though. No, what I'm saying is... No, I get it. I was upset. What I'm saying is this is a person that I helped who went on Yeah, but you weren't. I'm saying, like, you know how sometimes you take someone in and you nurture them and they, I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but. Oh, you mean actually being affiliated and associated and help someone and then they go off. Yeah. No, not to that degree. I don't, I don't, that's betrayal. Is it? Yes. See, what I just described was a moment where I could have said. Fuck this person. Right. And I didn't. Right. And that person, and that person benefited from me and I never benefited from that benefit. Yeah. I never got anything out of that. Right. Never got no percentages, never got any nothing extra. I could have when that person asked me what they asked me, I didn't have to mention you could that say person. Someone else. Yeah. No, I get it. So I was speaking on that level. What you're talking about is basically have I ever been betrayed? Because that's it be, what, is it betrayal? If you, if you if you help somebody become great. But how deep are you talking? Because are we going on the surface? Because I just gave you an on the surface example. That's really on the surface, though. I'm saying, like, sometimes people come into your life, right? Mm-hmm. And they come into your life, but then, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they take off and they get busy for you. Is that betrayal? No, that's not betrayal. That's life. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, no, that's, so, not, uh, that's, yeah. that's not betrayal. Like, I help so many people. So many people benefit from what they do get from me, whether they're in my presence, whether they're benefit from my network. Like you, I do what I do because this is who I am as a person. Yeah. So knowing me in a lot of cases is a benefit being around my network. If you know how to network is a benefit, but I don't try to calculate or keep track of everybody that I help and see where they're going and see how they progressed and then figure, okay, well, how are you going to come back and thank me? No, no, me? Not, not like that. But I'm just saying, it. like, 
you just seem like the person people would come to. So I just thought maybe that's like, it's hard to get close to the people that you help sometimes because you don't want to get attached to them. Nah, it just depends on the situation. Diff- maybe it's different for women. Because I I handle every situation based on that circumstance. Okay. Some people get close, some people don't. Some people come for a specific purpose, and that purpose is fulfilled, and they go on. Right. You know, I'm not I'm not helping when I help somebody. Hell, I'm not I'm not helping them because I'm figuring like you're not what's keeping come on score. No, absolutely. No, not. no, I didn't think that. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. Okay. Not at all. Sometimes they're going. Sometimes you know people will get helped and they will benefit and they will go on and that'll be that. Yeah, I like to help people too, but in a, on a different level. Like, I like to help on a greater level where it f- where I don't know. Like it's not individual. Like I'd ra- like I'll go to I'd ra- I'd like to go. I have gone to like an orphanage. And, like, bought a bunch of toys and, like, give it to them or, like, buy them medicine. But I don't know about, like, just helping, like, individuals. Well, sometimes when you help an individual, you are helping many. Because you don't know what that individual is going to go through. Yeah. It's like Tupac said, I may not change the world, but I might spark the mind of the person who does. So it's like, if you help this person. Right. What that person does with the help that they got from you could go on and benefit others. It still started with you. You were the root of the help. But so sometimes you help people and then they don't deserve it. You know what I mean? You're like, fuck, why did I even do that for you? Like, well, because you didn't do it for them. You did it for you. You did it because that's who you are. Right. It's like somebody asks you for money on the street. You're giving them the money out of the kindness of your heart. Now, if they say I'm hungry and you feel bad for them and you get them five bucks and then they run down the block and go buy drugs with it, you could say, hey, you said you was hungry, right? Mm -hmm. Or you could say, hey, I did my part. You said you was hungry. Right. So you just brought bad energy onto yourself. The next person you ask to eat, the next person you try to run that game on, you might won't be successful. But again, it's, I just think it's a lot easier to give generously, give genuinely. And once it's done, don't even think about it no more. Nobody wants to be used. Nobody wants to be taken advantage of, obviously. But right. it's just a lot easier, in my opinion, to, if you're doing it from the heart, just do it and be done with it. You'll yeah. get blessed for it. Right. No, of course. Givers always get blessed. I think they're protected. Yeah. There's not a lot of us out there. Yeah, I mean, I said it earlier. That's why I believe that's why my life is fulfilled. Like, when I say I answer every DM every day, I do. Like, I'm not exaggerating. That's why my platform is what it is. That's why so many people, you know, revere me and respect me and, 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 and quite frankly, like, love me because, like, I really do talk to people. Uh, Like, it's, it's, it's twisted out here. Like, I've had men, grown men, talk to me about their relationships, about their parenting, you know. like. Are you a parent? I am. I'm a grandfather. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like when you're, when you're, when you're a giver, it, it definitely has, you know, its benefits and rewards, you know, and. I'm grateful, you know, because like I said, life life is life is life is scary. Life is tricky. Yeah, it really is, and it's very unpredictable. It's unpredictable. So when you're, as long as you're not having a bad day, it's a good day. Right, and even when you're having a bad day, it's just like we say in Islam: when everything is good, alhamdulillah. When everything is bad, still alhamdulillah. It's hard. It's hard, but it's necessary. Yeah. You know, I was having that conversation actually earlier today about sometimes, you know, you have, you, you feel um, guilty when you, when your life is blessed and enriched and fulfilled and then you see other people struggling. Some you know, some you don't know. And people having a hard time 
you know, and I know personally I've I've gone through that. I've gone through moments where I feel like, damn, like I'm talking to this person, I'm talking to these people and like they really having it hard right now. And I'm I'm telling them remain positive. I'm telling them be, you know, faithful and so on and so forth. These are the things that I'm telling them to encourage them. And then sometimes I feel like, man, what if that happened to you? Somebody telling you, oh, just stay strong, just be positive. And the same thing that I'm doing for someone, somebody was doing that for me. Like, would I be receptive? And then I had to remind myself, like, dog, like some of these people, this is their first rodeo of real struggle. Mm-hmm. I struggled before right. over my in my lifetime. I've had horrible jobs. I've lived in crack house. I've lived in drug houses. I've not known, you know, where the next meal was going to come from. So, like, I've been through that. Like, so I had to remind myself, like, you've had your days of being tested over your course of time in life. You've had those moments when you struggled. You've had those times when you was unsure and didn't know what was going to come next. So it's like, be grateful, thankful, and happy that things go the way you want them to go right now. And don't feel guilty about it. But I, you know, sometimes it happens though, because I never feel guilty. It what? I mean, I, I have, it feels sometimes it feels for me. It just, right. maybe you're a better I feel person bad for people. I feel bad to see people struggling. I feel bad to see people. Str- I, actually, I can't even talk to people who are struggling because I feel like, um, after talking to someone who's struggling, I'm like, fuck, like, I, I can't complain to anyone. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's that. That's <laughs> kind of what I'm talking about. It's hard to. <laughs> yeah. Like, because it's like. I think some was it Steve Harvey that said. The best thing you can do for a broke person is not be one of them. And. Yeah. I just don't agree with that. I don't think the best thing you can do for a broke person is not be one of them. I think the best thing you can do for a broke person. Just give them an opportunity to not be broke. Or advise them, encourage them. Yeah. You know, Some talk up. to them. Yeah. See, see where they are in life. Maybe you can say something that can change the direction that they're in. Maybe they just lost at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I also feel like if you're extremely uh, blessed, right? Like, and somebody, you can't have broke friends. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to, I was saying like if you had a feast and you know, you can't give a homeless person an advice and not food. You know what I'm saying? A, a million percent. Yeah. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't, I don't, I don't think people should pocket watch rich people. I don't think they should no. feel entitled. Yeah, of course not. that you're saying that, but I'm yeah. just saying and for the sake of conversation, I don't think people should do that. No, But I sure also not. believe, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. I think, you know, a lot of us are blessed but I think a lot of us are tested with wealth as well. Like I tell people all the time, some people are blessed with wealth. Some people are cursed with wealth. Mm. You know, everybody that's wealthy is not happy. Most everybody aren't. that's wealthy is not blessed. That's true. So. I feel like you have to surrender sometimes. Like, they're, like I feel like in my life when I've surrendered to my situations, even if they were really bad, is when they turned around for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have to recognize that you're not in control. Sometimes right. we fool ourselves and think that we can make something change because yeah. we don't like it. Right. Sometimes we really just got to live in it and understand it and get cuz the test is to get through it, not to make it stop. Cuz sometimes we can't make it stop. Right. Sometimes the pain is figuring out how do I still exist? in the midst of all of this and don't lose myself or don't give up. Right. That's true. So a lot of people do drugs. Escapism. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I don't do drugs. Life is hard. You said you lived in a crack house. I did, but I wasn't getting high. Oh. (laughs) You've never gotten high? No, I've never done drugs. I'm scared of drugs. I sold a lot of drugs, but I'm afraid. I'm scared to do drugs. That's good. Yeah, I'm a, I'm afraid to do drugs. Stay away from drugs if you if you do drugs. Um, it only leads to like a bad ending. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have come back from it, but if you can avoid that journey altogether, I, I, I would advise it. Yeah, for sure. It's a hard journey. It is. You know, in hindsight being 2020, it's, it's hard to look back and be like, damn, once upon a time I was a part of that. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, but, you know, again, not from using drugs, but, you know, we were addicts as well. Jay-Z said, users aren't the only abusers getting high within the game. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the uh, drug dealers. Uh, addicts. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read his book on the plane. He gave me one before we started. I'm excited to read it. What is, what is it about? Is it about you? It is. And the foundation of the book is something my mother told me when I was a kid, which is, you're going to learn everything the hard way because you don't listen. Mm. That's the foundation of the book. So the book is compiled of some of my 10 years in the street, um, going to prison. What did you go to prison for? Gun possession. Okay. Um, relationships, you know, when I was married, you know, my infidelity in my marriage. Some of the street stuff, not a lot, but enough for people to understand that I know what I'm talking about. Um, so you're trying to tell people not to learn things the hard way? Like what to avoid? I am. I'm giving them my experiences because a lot of people like yourself didn't know where I came from. Like, who is this guy? He just <laughs> fell off the moon and landed on social media talking heavy. Yeah. You know, it's like, who yeah. is he? Where did he come from? So the book for me was a way to, to show people that I am validated in what I speak about. I don't Google this information. Okay. I really lived it. Okay. And then there's experiences in that book that you'll be able to see. And then I have a transitional period where I speak about where I am now and like social media, the things that I speak about on social media, parenting and how to deal with police. And so, so these are things that's in the book as well. So it just gives you a well-rounded view. Okay. That's why he knows so much. Mm. This is his journey. This is who we see on social media. Okay, he really didn't just fall out the sky. He really been through some things. Do you think that, um, like, going to jail is essential to learning, like, key elements about life as a man? Hell no. No? No. You do not have to go to jail. You do not have to go. Which, which camera is they looking at me? That, yeah. that's this yes you do not have to go to prison jail the county juvie you do not have to do none of that to be a real one and you do not that's have not to go to learn life's lessons you d so you don't think that like an 18 year old who if he does like six months it might like strain him out that could be dangerous it can go both ways absolutely when yeah. you go to jail when you go to prison, when these kids go to juvenile, first of all, you have to understand these places are not rehabilitation centers. No, I know. I've been there before. <laughs> right. So sending an 18-year-old to, to juvie for six months or so prison for six months doesn't necessarily equate to when he come out, he's going to be straight. He's yeah. going to be straightened out. Now, unfortunately, some have to go through that. You know, but the rehabilitation of going to prison comes from you learning, A, from your own mistakes, B, learning what you don't like. See, I went to prison. They gave me three years. I did 16 months on parole, 14 months in, right? Mm -hmm. That was enough time for me to know I never want to do this again. Right. That's what I got out of it for but myself, that, but that's too. But that's me. Like, you get some people, and they, they do 14 months, a year, year and a half, and it's like, oh, that wasn't nothing. No. What? No. I, I hated it. Yeah, it's horrible. I was only in there for two weeks, and that was enough for me to be like. Yeah, no, but you had you, you was there long enough to know, I don't like this. Yeah, no. Fuck and that's, that's, that's the rehabilitation. The rehabilitation is, do you take heed to the effect that it had on you? 
So yeah. many people go back because they still go back and take the same risk. I'm not going to lie. I did, not at the same degree. Mm -hmm. But even after going to prison, um, I came home in 99. Seven years later, I found myself in trouble again. And if the police had not stolen money, I would have went to jail for a long time. Mm. For, a significant, for a significant amount of time. But the cops stole money and didn't come to court. So I ended up beating the case. But in 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 my logical mind, like I could have went back to prison somewhere that I know I don't want to go. And yeah, it's horrible. And 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 I had enough sense to know that, but I still was throwing those rocks at the penitentiary. And then it was after that, like this is 2024. That 2006, yeah. That time that I got locked up in 06, that's the last time I was in handcuffs. I've never been arrested again since January 2000. Actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, January 2006. Mm -hmm. That's the last time I was ever arrested. Because I had to tell myself, yo, you you made out with this one. You know you don't like. You know you don't like those conditions. Yeah, of course not. You know you don't like those those COs talking to you any kind of way. Like they and they and they do these they they do this stuff purposely, L. Like they purposely embarrass you when they can because they can. I remember I missed count one time. I will never forget this. I missed count one time because I was in the showers mm -hmm. and I didn't hear them call count. So most guys guys that's been to, been to prison know like that's one of the worst things you can do is is mess the count up because right. it holds. Like, the whole jail is locked down until the count is complete. Right. So I didn't hear the count. I was in the shower, and the CO came and got me. He was like, yo, you didn't hear them call count? I'm like, nah, my bad. I ain't know. He did not let me dry off. I, I, you know, most guys, I know me and a lot of others, I shower with my boxers on. He did not let me dry off. He did not let me wrap the towel around me. He marched me in handcuffs from the shower to the lieutenant's office. Dripping water. Naked? With my boxers on. But um, I'm wet, though. Right. I'm soaking wet with white boxers on. Right. And he marched me from the, from, from the shower to the lieutenant's office. And the lieutenant respected me, you know, because I wasn't a problem guy. So when he didn't know who missed, he didn't know who had missed the count. So when I walked in and he saw it was me, he was like, not you. You know, because I, I was cool. Mind my business, they ain't get in no trouble and create no waves. And I was like, and the gentleman said, LT, like, I, my bad. Like, I didn't hear, hear y'all call count. He said, but you know what time? I said, I just wasn't paying attention. But it was embarrassing standing there. I'm a grown man. I'm 32 years old, handcuffed, soaking wet. And then once they got the count straight, I had to go and mop up all the water that trekked from the shower to his office. Like, this is the type of stuff. I, I, I don't like that. Like, I don't, I can't subject myself to that type of humiliation. Because these guys, they have a bad day at home, or they got a wife or a girlfriend that's running over them, or they wife sleeping with the Amazon man and all that. They bring that to work and take it out on the inmates. Mm -hmm. And I just, that's just not something that I, that, that I want to be subjected to. The humiliation. Yeah, because they, they because they do it they when they degrade you when they can because they can. Right. You know, and but I I believe a lot more younger guys would avoid prison if they listen to guys like me and others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. I want some of these young guys to be wise, wise young men. It's hard out here for them. To it do is. That. It's hard. It's hard because of the temptation. It's hard because of, unfortunately, the curse of social media, making everything microwavable, making everything instantaneous, making everything I got to get it right now in abundance. I I need to make one million dollars by tomorrow morning at seven a.m. Mm -hmm. This is what and they and they think and and they think it's possible because it's ridiculous. Other people make it look easy. Yeah. And it's not. It's not enough people being honest and realistic with them and telling them that it's not this easy. You know, I'm getting ready. One of the things that we're working on, too, is a um, 
a conference that I'm going to do this summer. And, 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 and part of the, the bulk of the conference is about, you know, the reality of our own journeys and our own personal successes. L's success doesn't have to be what Shabazz's success is, but it doesn't make me unsuccessful. I'm not unsuccessful if you drive a Rolls Royce and I drive a Nissan Maxima. Right. I have to know. You if think you can you can drill that into somebody? Absolutely. I do it all the time. People, believe it or not, when you can help an individual identify with themselves and embrace their reality, it's refreshing. It's a lift off of them. Because everybody is not going to be rich, eh? Yeah. Everybody is not going to have a Rolls Royce and diamonds and Birkins and a big house. And some people don't even want that. But that's not destined for everybody. Some people's success is the life that they have right now that they wake up to every day and sustain. I'm not talking about a struggling life. Nobody, that's not, that's not pretty for anybody. I'm saying there's some people who actually have a decent life and they wake up every day not realizing that their blessing is the fact that they're able to maintain the life that they have. Cause you could take them out of their life and put someone else in their life. And they'd be happy as shit. They would act like they're in Beverly Hills. Right. The life that you live is luxurious to somebody somewhere. So I'm never going to tell people not to, want to be successful, not to be ambitious to have more. But at the end of the day, don't lose yourself and waste your life chasing it, overlooking what's really meant for you. And sometimes people get lost. But when they identify with it, I've seen it, I've witnessed it. People have thanked me, like, yeah, I was reaching for the wrong thing. Mm. My life ain't as bad as I thought it was. Thank you, Shabazz. Sometimes people just had to be reminded and reeled back in. Yeah. And also know that just because you see somebody with a lot doesn't mean that they're happy. Maybe ultimately school is just not really teaching the right things. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if kids were taken into and actually shown like what life is really like, like I was telling the guests before that you came, that if if women were taken into homes with single moms for a month, they might not have that same reality if they knew what it was like. I agree. You know what I'm saying? It's so the same thing as school not really teaching um, entrepreneurship. and and. Well, not everybody could be an entrepreneur. No, they can't. But what I'm saying is school, school, teaches, school teaches you to be a worker. School doesn't teach you to be a boss. Yeah. Everybody can't be bosses. Right. But everybody doesn't have to be workers either. Right. You know, it has to be a duality. It has to be a balance. But a lot of times in school, depending on what type of education is being given, but yeah. if, you really, if you really look at school and the structure and the design of a lot of schools. I feel like people don't want to work these days. Looks, Nobody wants to work. Yeah, no, well, COVID contributed to that. Yeah. COVID contributed to that. And, uh, again, it goes back to the, the instantaneous microwavable mm -hmm. mentality. Right. People don't believe you, uh, people don't even know, some people don't know what work is. True. Everybody think that you're supposed to be, again, the whole boss thing. <laughs> I'm a boss. I'm a boss. I'm a boss. I said this on social media one day. And I was like, wait a minute. Every time you get on here, somebody's a boss. Yeah. Where's the workers? Right. How we got all these bosses. And no workers. All these chiefs, no Indians. You have to, you, not even knowing, you, didn't, you, you can't even be a good chief if you was never a good Indian. It's levels, it's stages. And you have to be able to adjust. You have to be able to reduce if necessary. Right. You know, I, you know there's been times in life where I thought this was it, baby. We made it. Skirt, not quite. Yeah. Go back and get that job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And do you think you're too good? Because if you think you're too good, we can really show you struggle. 
no, I'm 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 gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this lesson, mm-hmm. put this and put this in the archive as well when I'm done with this and use this as leverage. Because it could always be worse, right? You better know it. Yeah, you better know. That's it. what I was saying. Like sometimes I feel like maybe people have to go through certain things in their lives so they can know what not to, early on. Yeah, so they could know what not to do. Yeah, I just don't think it has to be prison. Right, not for a long time. But maybe, like, throw some 16-year-olds in there for, like, a few days. It's just a matter of, but see, they tried that with Scared Straight. But that was a TV show. I mean, maybe, like, just to show them what it's really like, because it's scary in there. But, it, it again, no matter how scary it is, no matter which one you throw them into, they have to have the mentality of receiving. Because you know what? I, I do know a lot of men who... Um, Keep going back. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, don't even call me. Like, I am i don't want to talk to you. Because, like, you keep, like, I, you want to hear a story? All right, I have a, an acquaintance that um he just got out. Like, he he's a career, whatever. So he just career got criminal. out. Yeah. He just got out. And I was like, yo, look. Like, you know, you're in your 40s. Like, you need to, like, get your shit together. Like, you can't go back to jail. He was dating this girl. They got into a fight, blah, blah, blah. He fucking boiled her lizard because he got mad at her and he went back to jail. So I'm just like, some people just are stupid. You know what I mean? He boiled? He boiled her lizard. Her pet? Her pet lizard. And he's in jail now. <laughs> he, he he boiled the, <laughs> the, the girl The girl's lizard. <laughs> the, the, the gecko? Yes. And now he's back in jail. And I'm just like, I don't even want to, don't call me. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Anymore. Uh, this is my camera. See, now, youngins, y'all hear this, right? He's not even young. No, no, I'm, but I'm talking to the youngins. Oh, okay. He boiled a lizard. Now, this is what I try to get people to do ahead yeah. of time. Think about it. I say it takes 3 to 30 seconds to change your life from 3 to 30 years. Okay. That's a saying of mine. Okay. Another one is walk away or walk the yard. Okay. Or... Before you make any critical decision, good or bad, ask yourself, is it worth my life? Right? Mm -hmm. Those are three talking points that I have. I say this to the young guys and girls. Think about what she just said. Imagine going to prison and you in the yard or you in the mess hall and you eating and you having a conversation and somebody asks you, why are you here? And your response has to be, I boiled a lizard. (laughs) You're missing your freedom. You're missing women. You're missing your family. You can't go to the store. You can't go to no games. You can't walk down the street. You are missing out on the free world, as free as it is, because you decided to boil a lizard. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. This is what I so this is what I try to implore a lot of people to this is why I say take those three to thirty seconds. Like, yeah. do you really understand how much can happen in thirty seconds? A lot. You can ruin your entire life. Or you could prevent yourself from ruining your life. Yeah. In thirty seconds or less. He boiled a lizard. Think about that. It's the same thing when I watch these guys who lose their tempers and girls lose their tempers because somebody don't want to be with them anymore. Oh my God. I've been around a lot of that. Your life is that worthless to you that you're going to go to prison. Why? Because someone doesn't want yeah. to be Why, with you anymore. What is anymore. that about? Like I, I could never be that like that. Like if you don't want me like, okay, bye. You know what I mean? Like I'll never, But I find myself around a lot of men that are willing to take it there with me if I don't want to be with them. And I was like, what's wrong with you? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why why would you want to be with someone who doesn't want you anyway? Because somebody like you, they ignored the signs in the beginning. I don't even know you like that. Right. I saw you online. I looked at your videos and things like that. And I can almost, I'm almost willing to bet, and I don't gamble. Okay. I'm almost willing to bet. That most guys ignore that exterior that you have in the beginning because they think they're going to make you be something that they want you to be versus who they already saw you to be. 
Right. Like, I, I see it already. Like, less is more. Women like yourself, less is more. Like, it's just less is more. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about less actions of a man, because you got to be a man. But less is more in terms of uh, well, you can't for, You can't force it here. But this is but this is what I'm saying. Less is yeah. more because yeah. once you've decided that that this ain't that, there is no trying to turn that into this. Right. And that's probably where a lot of guys go wrong at. Yeah. They try to hold on. No, you got to get walked out on. Yeah. Me? Yes, you. Walked out on? Yeah, meaning but for not forever, if you know what I mean. No, I mean I don't know how for long, how for how long. But, but yeah, you just can't like it, like most women who have these tough exteriors, or you know they really stand on what they say, stand on business, and they they really embedded in their ways and their personality. Right. Like it's cool. One thing I learned, and I learned this from a younger woman. Right. I learned from a younger woman how to allow a person to be who they are. That's just the key. Yeah. That's what I mean when I say less is more. Once a person show you what they don't want or what they're not going to do, and you know that to be a strong-willed person that can't be swayed, you're wasting your time. Yeah. And you're going to frustrate yourself. And that's when the dumb but stuff happens. you know happens. what it is? Some people are not conscious of themselves. Too. You know what I mean? You have to be like a conscious person. Some some men are not conscious. No, they're not. It's, and it's not about and it's not always about conscious of themselves. A lot of times it's the um it's insecurities. Right. A lot of times it's insecurities. A lot of times it's ego. Yeah. Like a lot of times us as men will get frustrated if we can't if we can't get the woman to do what we want them to do. And women do it too. Like these, uh, and and that's why, like a lot of these conversations we you see on podcasts, like you was talking about earlier, the reason why they sound so lopsided is because people forget that the things that you're talking about men applies to women, and some of the things that you're talking about women apply to men. Like you're still talking about two imperfect beings. Right. They may not share the identical flaws. But you're still talking about two flawed people. So when you talk about men always this and men always, no, but the women, when in all actuality, there's enough blame to go around. But everybody tries to find who's at fault versus adhering to the fact that you're dealing with two people who could be at fault right. because you're dealing with flawed individuals. Right. So, like like I said, I, I, I know this just from looking at you and – and watching you interview other people, like your demeanor and, and you know, your your responses to a lot of things. And I'm like. Is that she, I'm a flawed individual? No, not that you're flawed. It's just that you're who you are and, and, and that's how it's going to be. Right. You know, that doesn't mean that you can't change. That doesn't mean that you won't um, accommodate people, you know, where you may deem necessary. But. It was evident to me, like, this is somebody who's, she's practically non-compromisable. Right. And that's just my observation. Yeah, it's, it's pretty solid. Pretty on, on point. I hope you don't have to go through too many bad experiences with men that don't want to let go. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, well, I you know, you, you know, you're you know your, ex you your experiences mold you to what you are. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, because I, I used to be a, back years and years ago, I was a wear it on the heart, I mean, wear the heart on the sleeve type of guy. Uh huh. Get your heart. I never loved a woman that didn't hurt me until, you know, recent years, you know, and I vowed that that would never happen to me again. But you can only do that once you identify with what self-love is. That's yeah. what, you know, so that's what prevents men from doing what you said. They do. Can't let go. Mm -hmm. Won't let go. It's self-love. For men and women. If you love yourself, if you love you, what do you look like begging and pleading and crying and harming someone who don't want to be with you no more? 
That self-love is not going to allow you to do that. Self-love will still permit you to be disappointed. Self-love will still permit you to miss someone. Self-love will still permit you to not want to lose someone. But self-love is not going to let you risk your freedom. Self-love is not going to allow you to take your life. Mm. Self-love is not going to allow you to hurt somebody because they don't want to be with you anymore. Self-love is going to help you understand that if you could look in the mirror and say, I know I'm a good person. I know I didn't do anything wrong. I can get somebody else. I We can deal with it. You got it. So how do you get the men to start loving themselves, to stop acting? Because a lot of w- women go through that. You know what I mean? Like a lot of women get well, I, with I, men that don't, like they're, you know, they're getting like, stalked and harassed and whatever the fuck like you know and men go to you know whatever whatever happens to them they kill they kill their wives they kill their girlfriends you know like the guy who fucking killed on 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 facebook he killed his girl and his ex-wife and himself you know what i'm saying i saw that a while ago yeah yeah well see some men can't take rejection also some men can't take rejection and some men can't take embarrassment so it's it's twofold. Granted, there is never a, an excuse or a reason to take someone else's life. But let's just go with the latter first, the embarrassing part. Sometimes in relationships, and since we're talking about men, I'll stay on men. Sometimes women can do things to make men feel cornered and trapped. And men who don't have self-love men who don't have a certain sense of um, self-control and restraint, they can become very dangerous in that space. They can, come, they, they can become dangerous in the space where, because some, some women take advantage of men. Some women play with men. Some women um, put men in very compromising situations and based on how that individual is made up determines the response that you're going to get. Again, it's never an excuse because it still goes back to having self-love and the wherewithal and that internal understanding of yourself. Even if you embarrass me, even if you make me feel bad, I still have to care enough about myself that I'm not going to do something that I'm going to regret. So whether it's being embarrassed or whether it's, having security issues of I don't want nobody else to have you. So I'm not going to let no, I'm, if I can't have you, nobody can have you. Yeah. You know, th- those things are deeply rooted in mental issues, but more importantly too, in my opinion, I'm not a professional on it, but when you don't love yourself enough, mm. when you don't love yourself enough, you're gonna you can lose control of yourself. And when you lose control of yourself, anything is liable or bound to happen. So you being a a woman, you you got your own thing going on, you know, you're attractive, and you got a guy who's who's dating you and now he's in love with you, but you just might get to a point one day where this ain't it for me. And I tell people this humans will human. When you least expect it. And that's why self-love is important. Because I can marry you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't care what those vows say. Forever, for worse, or better, to to eternity, whatever it says. That's not guaranteed. That ring, I don't care. All the cute, fancy terminology come up. Well, you know, this band is a circle and it's endless and it means our love is forever. That's all a crock of cuckoo. Or caca, excuse me. Caca in Spanish, right? Caca. I said cuckoo. It's a crock of caca. Right. Because a person is only going to be what a person wants to be. And a person can be married for 30 years and wake up one day and decide, hey, you know what? (sighs) I just would love to be by myself. I've given John the best years of my life or I've given Angela the best years of my life and 
just want to ride these last few years out by myself doing whatever I want to do. That's very possible, L. Eh? Yeah. And people don't think about that. Right. So when people break up, remember on Why Did I Get Married and Angela's sitting on the bed crying saying she got, what, 85 cent or $85 in the bank? Mm -hmm. Because she gave her whole life to Mike? I gave him my whole life. And now he's gone and all I got is 85 cents or $85 or 85 something. Yeah. It's because she never expected a human to human. So is, is it even worth loving then? Absolutely. When you love yourself. Because when you love, if, when I love me, I can love you. And we can have a ball, baby. But there's boundaries. Love boundaries, internal boundaries. We don't have to have outs. We could do whatever, however, whenever. We can have a we can have a time. We but would a time you get emotionally life. attached to that person? Of course you will. But again, you can never allow yourself to be to more love that person more than, more you, than love you love yourself. yourself. Right. That's what people go wrong. Got it. You love them more than you love you, because now you would rather. Live in misery with them than to love then you yourself both without fucking them. miserable together. Yeah, because you're going to make them miserable. Because if you love someone, you want to see them happy, even if it's without you. Period. That's yeah. love. Yeah. Love is understanding if your mate or someone that you've been with, and it's frightening, it's, it's, it's disheartening to think about it. I have people that I love that... I wouldn't want them to come to me and say, hey, I just never want to see you again. I just want to. That's going to hurt. It hurts. But once upon a time in life, that would have destroyed me. Now where I am in life, I'll miss you. But I'm going to let you go. Right. I'm going to allow you to do this. Right. And chances are, chances are, you'll spin the block. But I Always. don't know what's going to be here when you get back. Always spin the block. You know, I don't know what's going to be here when you do. Right. You know, so again, this this is not a promotion to put boundaries or 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 or, or barriers on how you love the person that you love. Have a good time, baby. Enjoy them. But just understand, I don't care who you are, where you are. You are dealing with a human being. And humans are unpredictable. And they will human when you least expect it. And when they do, you have to be prepared for your self-love to override any decision that another person makes that could change the trajectory of the direction of your life. Because if you don't have self-love, you could be in very big trouble. You could boil a lizard. You could boil a lizard. <laughs> Okay, on that note, thank you so much for coming. It was a very enjoyable conversation. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You know what's funny about you? What? If you didn't say something was enjoyable, a person probably wouldn't know. Really? I mean, I... Do I make I, you... Did I make you feel like I wasn't enjoying it? No, not at all. I enjoyed the conversation. Like I said, I was already mentally prepared for your demeanor, what, your coolness. What, what's my demeanor? Is, is it because I'm not emotional? No, it's, you're not. You're not. You're not. It's not emotional. You're not expressive. I'm not moved. Mm. What you don't show moved. I know you're moved because <laughs> the conversations we had prior to me even coming here. So, right. Put it like this: if if I didn't already like look at your post to see what your demeanor was, right, and the conversations, you would think that, I wasn't happy right now. Yes, but I'm smiling. Right, but. What the conversations that we've had off camera? Right, I I, I don't I don't it's give more, it here. It's more it's 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 more it's it's more bubbles in the in the text messages than it is in person. Yeah, and it's not a bad thing because again, you have a very cool, laid back demeanor. So it's even 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 if you're excited, uh, yeah, the excitement only it. goes to. But I'm always like I'm like that with everything. No, I don't doubt it. Again, yeah. I'm, I can't sit and pretend like oh I know you to a T and I got you all figured yeah. out. But 
what I've observed. Right. Like, even if someone deposited a million dollars in my bank account right now, like, no, I wouldn't move. You know what I mean? No, I believe you. Yeah. I like, mean, and, and people have, people, I was at a networking event the other day, and the person who invited me introduced me to this person, and oh, this person used to do this, and this person, did, and I was like, oh, okay, okay. She's like, you're never impressed by anything. Which is not true, because I am impressed. I'm just not ecstatic. <laughs> yeah, like animated about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just not, you know. You know what's crazy? I, th- I was talking to someone recently, and I feel like they stopped talking to me because I feel like they probably felt that I wasn't interested in them. You know what I mean? Because when they would call me, they had so much energy. And, um, like, I don't, I don't have that. Like, I don't have, like, that... Hey, ah, like I, you know what I mean? I'm just like, oh shit, like I'm, I'm not even like I don't even know how to respond to that. You know what I mean? That's why people are supposed to take their time and do their due diligence about who they're dealing with. If a person took the time, yeah, and paid attention to you, they wouldn't get offended when they're on ten and you're on two about the same topic. Yeah. That's her personality. Right. That's another thing that I've learned interacting with people. I've learned that everyone doesn't respond to things the way that I do. And because they're not doesn't mean they're unmoved, doesn't mean they're not interested. It means that sometimes we have to step outside of ourselves and meet people where they are. Like, for instance, if I know you're not, the hype, piped yeah, up I'm, individual. I'm not. I'm not going to take it personal if I'm piped up about something and you're not. I'm gonna be like, you know what? Uh, all right, I forgot who I'm talking to. You right. dweeb. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, we're going to joke about it because yeah. I already know who I'm dealing with. Yeah. People just like you're just one of those people. Like, and, and again, nowadays, especially with relationships, everybody, people meet at the club tonight. They hang out tomorrow. They have sex the next day. Right. They go next thing you know, seven, eight days in, you're in a relationship asking each other who is that texting you on your phone. Right. Because everything was just so f- uh superficial and fast. Yeah. Didn't get a chance, didn't take the time to really know who it is that you're dealing with. So now when you start to see the real person, it's like, I don't like you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And not saying that that's the case with you, but I'm saying that that's the reason why it's important to get to know people because we all have our own DNA. We all have our own fingerprints. We all have our own approaches to life. And sometimes it takes him up here and her down here or vice versa in order for them to be a perfect match in the middle. Just long as you get to know each other. Because I think you're a very nice person. Thank you. You know, because talking to you offline Mm -hmm. and – Seeing that no nonsense demeanor, laid back, I don't give a damn, like they don't match, but I know which one is the real person. Right. The real person is that polite person that said, Do you want me to order you something to eat? Right. That the the, the real person is the person that says, I'm excited that you're gonna be on my po-. like that's the person right there. Right. The exterior and all of that, that's that's your protection, that's your the easy mechanism so people don't get it twisted and play with you. Well, yeah, you know, you know what it is when you're a female also like uh, and you're around a lot of men all the time when you're nice, when you're excited. Oh, sorry. No, that's me. Yeah. Stretching. Yeah. Like when you're when you get too close. Um, like the messages get uh, not saying with you, I'm just saying in throughout no, my it, life, you know what I mean? Like it's happened to me. Where I'm like, oh my god, this is going so like I'm I'm hyped, you know, or this is going so well, like we're, because I'm you know a business person, so like whatever the case may be. A lot of guys take it to mean you want to have a baby now. Yeah, so like you know every <laughs> every single guy I've ma- made money was like you know like wants to, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I've had to kind of like learn to put up like some type of wall where it's like okay just because we're having like a dope ass conversation just because we're having like a good right doesn't mean i'm available it doesn't mean that i want to fuck you you know what i mean i mean listen or i like you or i want to be with you or like we're soulmates we're not i'm not your soulmate like i'm not your fucking soulmate well see 
again, self love, self assurity, self confidence. Yeah. Knowing that, hey, I'm him. Yeah. Prevents that. Right. It prevents that. Yeah, but it, a lot of people don't men, have that. Men, well, I'm glad. I'm glad I got it because I could be around the baddest of the bad and the prettiest of the pretty, and and I'm cool with all that. But it and and and, and it's funny to me because in in my twenties. Yeah. That used to be a joke with me and my friends. Oh, you couldn't look at me. If you looked at me more than f- four seconds, you wanted to get married. Right. And please don't speak. If you spoke and smiled, oh, she, she wants me. Right. You know, it took me years to understand, like, sometimes women like to be around men who are not coming on to them. Right. And when I figured that out, my stock went here with women. Mm-hmm. My association with, with, with women went here. And the women who trust me and love being around me elevated. Because now I have so many women who love me because they can be around me and don't worry about getting hit on. Right. They're comfortable. I'm not, you know, trying to, you know, act cool, but then really trying to hollow on the low. Like, I've, you know, I got to a point where I got so bad. Like, I've had women that's, that I've had sleep in my bed and it was like I was there by myself. Mm. Because, you know, I just believe in women being comfortable. Yeah, it's important. I, I believe in women being comfortable because, again, when you look a certain way when it comes to men, it can get, it, it can get overwhelming. I, I get it. Yeah. But what I, what, 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 if I may advise you, mm-hmm. Give that to who deserve it. Meaning the ones you can tell when somebody's trying to cross the line and when somebody isn't. So you don't have to give everybody the same ice grill. Do you think I gave you an ice grill? No, not me. Oh. We're good. Okay. We I listen, we don't got no problem. I might, yeah, you know I me. Mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, and so I again, I already knew what to expect. Right. I had two I had two variables to Compare. Okay. I saw what I saw online, but I knew what I was seeing on the phone. Right. So, again, that doesn't mean you are attracted to me and and, and the the door is open and the light is green for me. What I'm saying is I know you're a nice person. Yeah, I am a nice person. Most people, if they just saw you online. They would think I'm not a nice person. They would think that you're not nice or that you're not approachable. But I've gotten that. Once people get to know me, it's like, oh, damn. I thought you was mean, but I'm an observer. I get, I have to warm up to people. Yeah, me too. I warm up to people, and then if I'm around you again, then I get a little warmer. Yeah, it takes time. It takes time. Right. But that's everyone. You know, but Just, you I know. understand in, in, in the position that you're in, you're doing business, a lot of times you don't get another opportunity. You only have what that person did the first time. And it's like, dog, like you said, I did. <laughs> I'm not here to sleep with you or be your girlfriend and nothing like I'm trying to do business. And that's all this is. I'm just trying to be nice as we're doing it. And then when y'all get approached so many times and it gets overwhelming and then y'all just shut down. Yeah. I've and been, I've, 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 I've been seen through it. A, I've been through a lot, you know, not that I'm like, uh, whatever I'm just saying. So I guess it molded me to be like, like this. I internalize everything. No, I get it. I just I just implore people don't let people change you. Right. Don't let if you're a nice person, be a nice person. Like don't let people don't let people change you. Like I I've seen too many people have bad experiences with multiple people and they, and it turns them into, you know what? Man, I'm I'm just not being nice to nobody no more. No, cuz now you're going against who you are. Just continue to be nice, and when somebody shows you that they're not worthy of your niceness, then apply that to that individual. Okay. That's not easy for a lot of people to do. It's a lot easier to just give everybody the same treatment. Right. But it's more fulfilling to give them individual treatment. Okay. I'll take that into consideration. Try it. You might like it. (laughs) Okay. See, she's laughing. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for coming. I don't want to break the table. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed this. Yeah, it was. But fun. I didn't. I didn't anticipate anything less. Yeah, of course. I can't believe we're matching. Isn't that crazy? Well, 
I mean, this wasn't by design. We didn't plan this. It's just, I know, just went this way. I guess we both was just feeling very orange. successful in orange today. 